Hello? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. Looking for something to read. It is. I know you are. Everyone can see that. The rectangles. Mm hmm What with? This citizen thinks she can do without your assistance. Don't buy it. They all need help. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. My husband? No, he's not. I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where is this going, officer? She gives you a short nod and shifts her attention back to books. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. You've hurt yourself now. I told you not to mess around back there. What are you even trying to accomplish, you fool? You're only making things worse. Stop it. Be compelled to look at the books. Go to them. There. Working class drunk. You know what this means, right? Cracked it. All in a good day's work. What do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. No, it's not. Yes, and you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. Do marriages make any sense? Does honor? You're not a filthy philosopher. You're an officer of law. It's time to ace this case and not brood over your reputation. We can deal with the perception management later. Not honourable recruit, not honourable at all. You're back. Good. 
What can I help you with? It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Yes, after they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Everart and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. The lorries. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they are vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. Her irises are light green, like the river Esperance in bright daylight, upstream where it's clearer. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. You'll be indebted to her, in a way but one step ahead of the Union in another. We did. On more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter-precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. We know the company has launched its own probe into the Union's alleged involvement. We also know it's come up empty. It's not just the RCN. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Well, here's your chance, officers. No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However, This is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the Trade Committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. Thousands of litres of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable. The weary. Well, at least this solves one mystery. What is that, Lieutenant? Why I had to call East Motor Track and beg them to open a drawbridge for me. I'd wonder since I first drove in, on my motor carriage. I am sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Kisaragi. But we need them trapped here. This is a unique opportunity. I'm sure you understand. How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. There was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night, most likely. 
then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. It sounds like she tried looking into it herself, though she's clearly not the type your typical lorry man would confide in. Yes? Excellent. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I can keep the drawbridge up for a few more days at least. You should have the time you need. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Six kilometers southwest, in the Valley of Dogs, junior officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, you heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, ML. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. You? You're an officer of the RCM. Preciso Mundo. Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, detective. Yes, we are the Revachol citizens' militia. We are. Yes. That means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency, Wayfarer and Aliments Acts, three pieces of legislation keeping the city in a, let's be honest, laissez-faire stasis to the benefit of foreign capital. All three are good to know, when we are out policing. There's nothing basic about your role, Detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way our seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachol in the 20s was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched privatization scheme, a nuclear pile meltdown. They called it the International Zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative. They will never forgive you. That's somewhat of an exaggeration. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Ravacholians get to keep the peace in Ravachol, and the coalition doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> Anyway, sorry to intrude. Please continue. Yes, Lieutenant. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police. The only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachol. 
And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I'm here to help. Glad to have been of assistance, the little that I know. Anything else? Still here, stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? Ah, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Just be straight with him. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, ma'am. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look kindly on missing cargo. And it gives me time to work on my rhymes. Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. It's not a lie. It's something else. Impossible to say what at this point. But there's something in him. Some trepidation. stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. Fumes of heavy fuel oil waft over you, making your eyes sting. The odor mixes with cigarette residue.
Hold on, wandering man. How can I help you? You know, serious business. I'm sure the big boss will be glad to tell you. You'll have to ask him first. He's a chatty guy. Wants to talk about the strike. Return once you've met the union boss and are on a better footing with the organization. Fuck off again? Drugs? They are shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. You know where that shit comes from? Sarah Miridza. Safre. Ilmara. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing sector. They know they can't beat us in a fair fight. So they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage, racial economic sabotage. There's your in. Take his side in this particular fight. Eyes you wearily, unsure how to respond. This goes on for about two seconds. Then, damn, it didn't work. You should have signaled you're a nationalist before. I don't know shit. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. What do you think? I can't leave the Lorient unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. It's those little kids sneaking around at night. If they touch my stuff, the bosses will be on my ass like ass cancer. There was a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of a big lorry nearby. Yeah, I knew that guy. He was an honest driver who loved this country. Uh, we were having a good debate about genetics at the Wheeling in Rags when some kip boys smashed his lock and took damn near everything. Lost his fucking job over it. Since he left, I haven't had anyone to talk to. It's a fucking travesty, is what it is. Isn't it obvious? Fucking ceiling. That beady eyed South Samaran. His little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. Of course he's a lorry driver. What? He tell you he's just some simple businessman or some shit? He's selling his employer stuff after he broke the seals on his human ox lorry. His tribe are natural liars. 
It's in their blood. He's your man, all right? One hundred percent. I wouldn't be so sure about it. Not until we've heard what Si Leng himself has to say. Guess so. Officer? Drugs? I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. Unless you're into drugs, of course. In which case, drugs are excellent. Mwah! Tasty, tasty drugs. Investigating the local drug trade like some cool narc? But I am not a lorry driver. I am just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So you admit you're a lorry driver? No. I just said I work harder, and he's an asshole. I'm... Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not the most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. Exactly! It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rear view mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. No! That's insane! It's the fat hater. He's been eyeing me for a week and he sent you here. Maybe he's the one, huh? Have you thought about that? Nothing. I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. He doesn't want to talk about them. He's afraid. Look. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please don't get me into this mess. I've spent 15 years working my way up. It's a she, okay? The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, she's no lady. of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? I really want us to be cool now. Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with the tattoos? All of them. Even the ones who've left. I don't hang out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. I 
I don't know. Maybe if she is, I haven't gone near her. I don't get involved. I told you. It could be. She was strange. All right. I scored. Let's cap this off with a purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses, detective. Both of you, you deserve it. Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? I don't want to talk about that. I was hoping it isn't going to be her. All I can say is, she isn't around here anymore. She isn't some evil drug trafficker. And I don't know where she is. I didn't, man. I told you I was hoping it's not her. That she wouldn't be mixed up in it. He still is, hoping. It's just wishful thinking on his part, not trickery. Thank God I don't know. People here call her the Lady Driver. She kept her name a secret, from me too. Now I see why. A friend? An acquaintance. I don't know. She was the only person in this damn jam I could talk to. She's someone I don't want to rat out to the law, okay? A youngish woman. Gruff but in a cool way. What color hair? Blue and violet. Dyed. It was violet when she got here. Blue before she went. Damn, I don't want to... Please just let it go. Whatever she did, it can't be that bad. She's not a bad person. I know that much. We can't just let it go. It's part of a police investigation. That's how it always is with you, isn't it? All part of the investigation. The girl's troubled. If you hunt her down, she may not survive it. I can't have that on my conscience. It won't come to that. We won't pursue her on this. This is information only. I don't believe you. She's got the darkness in her. That young person's darkness when you think it's all over. And you're looking for a way out. She shared this with you? Yes, which is why I don't want to snitch on her. I heard the rumors. I saw the other drivers looking at me strange when we talked. And she told me too, that she's had a violent life. But I wasn't afraid of her, more like for her. Did this violent life include drug trafficking? Well, it looks like it did now. But we didn't talk about that. We talked about life, you know? She talked about her mind. The way it worked. The trouble it was giving her. Fuck, man. Go grill someone else with these questions, okay? There are plenty of drivers here who couldn't stand her, or were afraid of her. They'd be more than happy to rat her out. He's right. There are other options. The race man for one. Push Tommy and it will break his heart and his spirit. Don't expect you to be pals.
Thank you, friend. <sighs> wow, this makes me feel like I should pick up smoking again. Would help with my rhymes, too. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Where am I? Who are you? The smile on her face has disappeared, replaced by the weary aspect of a cornered beast. Uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. The men have these small jewels and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution, the side walls and cafes are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture starring Gabriel Buendero. Until you came along, that is. This is Gabriel Buendero. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you, his head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick, and his jaw the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her, even 50 years later. You can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. And schoolboys used to memorize all of his lines. Someone was. They are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? They're beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true, and they will win. They're coming for this, you know, all of this. She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from this strange thought, as if the past will one day wipe the present away, like a tidal wave approaching. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, Loman. It was early spring, and the man behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. While you, people, were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution, in meth, it was a golden age. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. Diamonds. Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. 
I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. She says that as if something narcotic is the real reason. Oh, it's so much more than a high where I go, Harifa. It's low. I go to the bottom. Yeah, it's definitely some kick. Some terrible kick in the dark. A sleep kick. Perhaps you can find out later. Then it's contraband, Loman. What? Do you want to take an old woman in? Be my guest. Lock me away like bad hand, Hermenegildo. Of course not. To truly understand the Boyadeiro, you need to listen to On the Western Plain. It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring Boyadeiro. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. Of course not. The Boyadero returns from the Western Plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. No. The Boyadero strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Madrid. Then he rides off, because the Western Plain is calling to him. The most beautiful. A true boyadero needs a whole horizon to himself. He can be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boyadero. What if to truly love a boyadero is to float lifeless downstream? She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. Come on, he thinks. She's not the lady driver. You hear that, Loman? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best caminers around. I drive routes no one else will. Lomonosov's land, Udashnaya Zemlya, the Western Plain, the Transcatalia Magistral, you for one A, at Estradas do Mirador, all the good ones, the deep trenches, where the bluebirds fly. You're right, Loman. I'm the one who should take my health more seriously. Thank you for looking out for me. A correct appraisal. You're quite shabby. Is that all you woke me up to say? What do I need drugs for, Loman? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. Yes. There is a protagonista and an adversario. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hole. Then what were you getting at? This line of questioning is going nowhere. Try harder. You're mad, no man. What of it? Maybe. Probably not. Makes no difference to me either way.
Just this month, I made half a dozen trips from Saramirisa to Grad. The U for one A. What do you think they take from Saramirisa to Grad, Luman? It's diamonds, Luman, obviously. Easy. He's the skinny man who thinks he's a poet. Never trust a poet. Also, he's the only one I can see from here. That's correct. There is no visibility of any of the others. Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and the features of this world. It's a good palette cleanser, this jamboree. Or I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will, to the Great Plains. I think we're done here, no? Did you just call me a lady, Herife? She clearly doesn't think she's a lady. Don't repeat it. I'm not that either, Harifa. I've gone too far from it all to remember what was between my legs. It doesn't work like that on the long haul. I'm only terrifying to small children and to those who used to know me. Because they can no longer recognize the person I once was. The big ones, the trucks. There's no women and men there, it's all just. In the middle of this town, there's a ghostly motorway. It takes all the people where they want to stay. How should I know? Do I look like I spend a lot of time with the other camioners sniffing around? When I have my movies to go to? Oh, Sim. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesque. Made machine is well kept for such an old machine. Looking for something odd? Come to tell me to fuck off again? you're talking about. Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Revachol West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. He means la puta madre. The name resounds like a bell in the air. A dark gong. You get a bad feeling about it. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. <laughs> yeah, him.
Then I presume you are familiar with his peonies. Yeah, they're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. Not just the unions. He has peonies everywhere. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peonies who do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. You're not peonies. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. No, of course not. We are not peonies. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peony's job to find out who that is. It's not a hard job. It won't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way, protecting this fucking thief. I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Lorimen and Carter's guild. You've seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there. Did his shitty little guild protect him? Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I softened him up as best I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. The main thing is to not overdo it, even when you're trying to scare someone. The most important thing is, how does it look on your resume? What? What do you think we're doing right now, Grunt? We're outside, talking. There's some kind of homo thing? Lieutenant gives you a brief sideways glance. Let's just go and ask Tommy, all right? We are wasting our time here. Still here? Stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? What? But I told you she's my friend. Please don't make me give her up, detective. Get someone else. There's a ton of drivers here. I... I thought you were a different kind of cop. The realization that you've used this friendliness and goodwill for your own ends. Here. Lori's still here, down past the statue of Philippe. The cabin is green. You can get in there with these. That's all I know. When did she leave? Last Friday. No, I don't know. She left them to me because she trusted me. So I can get it out of the way when the jam breaks loose. 
Otherwise... The other drivers would have to tow it or break in to get the machines moving. I bet you are. And he's sorry he couldn't be what he wants to be. A good person. His last line, his revenge on the world. Nah, I need to think my own thoughts now. Pray forgiveness for my sins. Go check your cabin. I hope it gets you something. Help someone. This green found A to Z, Contemporain, is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. This is the one our men pointed to. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of a seat and two steering levers. It feels like you're peeking into someone's home residence. Inside it's private. Cozy, warm, dusty too. You push the key into the lock and turn. It makes a cracking sound. Then the door pops back a few centimeters. You can just... The smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. There's something odd about the passenger seat. The seating fabric has been pulled tight over the lower side of the seat where the toolbox should be. These are movie posters featuring starlets from long-forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. One of them particularly catches your eye, a centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. There's definitely perfume in the air. It's spicy with a hint of amberette wafting through the bitter air of the cabin. The remnants of a sweet juniper scented perfume. Probably Grenade Number no. 5. The actress is draped in a sheath dress, one of her shoulders bared. The faded remains of an autograph run across the poster. She's looking past the camera. A feeling of tenderness washes over you. A longing, even, perhaps. And gentle tragedy. Wait, doesn't she? resemble someone you know, but you can't put your finger on whom exactly. The actresses and the rear actor all smile you a warm goodbye. A radio transmitter is attached to the dashboard and a toolbox sits under the driver's seat. Looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but the key has been removed, likely by the missing lady driver. Strange. There are so many radio stations saved here. Must be over 100 at least. For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. 
with quite a range too. For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation, with quite a range too. Uh, doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable without the dial key. The ghostly actresses and the rusty toolbox under the driver's seat and the oddly bulging seat cover. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here, a hammer, a pair of pliers, a rusty wrench have been casually thrown there by the disorganized driver. But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Sandpaper? A novel technique. Must be to offer some extra grip to the driver's foot. The movie stars are still smiling from the walls, but there's something strange about the passenger seat. The radio transmitter sits on the center console and the pull-out toolbox lies hidden under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. Voila, a stack of neatly folded papers has been stashed behind the seating fabric. You see three maps depicting a large metropolitan area. It's Revachon. Some of its routes and highways have been outlined with a pen. Bonne prise. This large map displays the elevated motorway called 881. The intake leading to Martinez is marked with a blue X. There's another X on the off-ramp at a place called the Old South. Toll booths at the intakes are marked with a circle. It looks like there are scant few ways of getting onto the elevated motorway that runs over Jamrock. And this person knows them all. There, hundreds of thousands of motor carriages roar on the 881, high above the mass of brown and red roofs that is Jamrock. The commuters don't even look down. The world ceases to exist outside the windshield. To Kuro, through the middle income neighborhoods there, by the river, and then to Stella Maris and La Delta for work, while the men and women of Jamrock scuttle to their fates below the road. This municipal map from the 30s displays a complex system of storm sewers underneath a sub-district called the Pox. Old military hospital, right adjacent to the 41st precinct. No storm will ever drown Revachol, the great solution to the riddle of history. The final map displays a labyrinth of service tunnels left over from the construction of motorway 881. A few routes have been marked with a pen, where the tunnels and sewers surface near the eminent domain and a traffic island in central Jamrock by the lake. It means that the smugglers are secretly using the motorway to transport their goods and materials. They've infiltrated East Moto Tract, most likely. The RCM patrols most of these auxiliary roads, though apparently not all of them. Hard to say. This distribution network looks certainly large, yet still vague enough. It doesn't reveal much about the Besmerti behind it. The Besmerti is a Revachalian crime syndicate 
They see themselves as the inheritors of the 14 Revachulian Indo tribes, but really they're just violent gangs vying for control on the west side of Revachol. With cool names like La Puta Madre and Aura Masta, it's a dark parody. It's definitely not the Union, they just do some logistics. This operation has spread everywhere in Jamrock. If it's that widespread, then Madre remains the most likely suspect. Here's bad news. There have been attempts at a serious investigation before, but they haven't ended well for those involved. Best not to disturb the scene. I'll have forensics go over the lorry and pick this up later. The stack of maps looks just like before, barely noticeable. The movie stars look silently by, and the pull-out toolbox has a rubber handle, worn from years of use. The metallic drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty, except for a folded newspaper. It's an issue of Petit Ferric from last Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. The ULAN frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... It's an issue of Pedi Ferdic from last Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. The ULAN frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... The pull up toolbox slides back into its nest. The rest is as it was. Posters, a radio, dust on the windows. He closed the rusty old lorry door. Great. I think we got everything. A word, detective? Before we return to Joyce? All right, we've finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found, so we don't do it in front of the company rep. Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter, particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this alleged drug trade casts a wide net. I'm not sure what the ULAN frequencies are all about, but they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed, or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. Oh, and the maps we found. They reveal the geographical extent of the operation. Looks like they've used abandoned tunnels and access roads to stay hidden. This is useful info. As elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. Don't be fooled. Desire always plays a role. Yes, well... Unimportant. We didn't find anything conclusive linking them to the smuggling operation. But somehow, I doubt that Everard Clare would be oblivious to something like this happening right under his nose. My suggestion is, we use it against the Union, in any way we can, to our own ends. It's a slippery hill, but we just might be able to pin them down, indirectly, down the road.
We should return to the murder case, see what Joyce tells us about the lynching. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation, sometime later when we are done here. We do not want to get caught in that. The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, I mean. Especially if the Madre grouping is involved, and I can't imagine they aren't. It's certainly worrisome. All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't help anyone either. Debrief over. After you. Good. What can I help you with? Not an umbrella, I hope. I don't need one myself, you see. Sadly, I need this one myself. It's hydrophobic, repels water, almost magically. The company makes them for offshore platform personnel. Very sturdy. What I can do for you is answer some questions. Nothing like talking to pass a rainy day. Yes, my eyes on the harbour have sent word to that effect. What have you discovered? It doesn't really matter. And I do apologise for the surveillance. Wild Pines can't afford to be blind at a time like this. In any case, it's a relief to know someone has looked into it. If I may ask, will there be an official investigation? I assume you discovered there is an operation. She's trying to conceal her excitement, but the slight glimmer in her green eyes tells you otherwise. The lieutenant is about to interject. Cut him off. This decision should be yours. If there is an investigation, it will be part of an ongoing operation, subject to confidentiality. I am sure you understand.
Of course, detectives. In any case, you've held up your end of our arrangement. I trust you with the rest. Now it's my turn. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but the situation demands it. If you don't solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have a bloodbath on our hands. Yes. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Since you are sharing, ma'am, this is also the RCM's worst-case scenario. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. They were dispatched after I relayed the Union's initial offer. Every worker... A member of the board. I tried to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric, or a joke. They did not appreciate the humor. Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the Union into surrendering. Who are they, exactly? Cronel, an Oranese military company. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. They wear ceramic armor, have semi-automatic weapons and years of combat experience. They also have trauma and stressor disorder and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. So what happened? The story is, one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders, for now. It's a smokescreen. In secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. It is very far from Disco. My only hope is that you provide a single, concrete suspect before the mercenaries indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put... If you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This, in turn, will force the Union to respond. They would have to, to project strength and power. The Debarder have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one.
Have you ever seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? It's not pretty. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle-loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. As I said, a bloodbath. Many bleak scenarios have already come true. Nameless, badgeless detective of the citizen's militia. All we can do is keep the rest from going the same way. One single concrete suspect delivered into civil court, and I may be able to defuse this situation. Not much. Their public resume is relatively good, as far as private military contractors go. I believe they were once called Downwell. Down a deep black well. They boast a long list of clients. Saint-Baptiste, Welchman Lorenz, Eendracht. A warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries. Guarding facilities escort missions and such. Meaning they're used to operating in war zones. Yes. All the good conflict corridors, Supramundi, Yesut, the Seminese Islands, countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Sadly, no. Before this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do, I don't have the resources. If you still have access to the ICP's database, you could run a better background check than I ever could. It may take some time, though. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I'd be dealing with a group like Crenell. I have. And they will. However, these orders take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. The remaining contractors, their tribunal, it's what they believe. That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. The lieutenant consults his notebook. His eyebrows knitted in concentration. Odd. Uh, we haven't heard any reports about an assault in connection with the lynching. Where did it take place? And when? 
Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the Colonel was drunk, maybe on narcotics, too. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor about a rumor. In any case, it's what the Colonel's remaining colleagues believe. You meet her soon enough, you feel. If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes, but I did not know him. You don't know how you know. It's not written on her face, nor in her voice, but she had sympathy for this man. Liked is a bit strong. He, he was the most charismatic among them. He handled all the talking. His departure left a major gap in the group's communication skills. Lely, his service name, a nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. One is a man, Corty, they call him, a nickname as well. The other, a woman, Phyllis de Paul. Corti is the gunner, I believe. De Paul is a radio operator. What would you say was his eye color? The deceased. She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face, then shakes her head. I can't remember. That's all right, man. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age, or gauge his facial expressions. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was, uh, Occidental, I think. Like brown hair, a mixed accent. Oranese. Or Messinian, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. In a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it. Through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. Vigilantes. You're a professional officer of the only legitimate authority in Rivershaw. You're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. One is obviously the scab leader at the harbour gates. The one chanting the idiotic slogans. He's barely maintaining his disguise. The other has a vantage point in a building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the lorry drivers. That may be so. I still hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, 
the situation at the gate is a border keg. Does this not bother you? Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant. But my hands are tied. How would my employer react if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be appearances. Ours is keeping the peace. That would afford a good vantage point. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where is your radio for contacting them, if I may ask? Do you have an earpiece? Heavens no. I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. I hope I can answer it better. Until the executions start? Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. Five days, not more. Maybe sooner. It's a matter of days, not weeks. I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If there is anything else I can help you with, please ask. Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. For about half a minute, in silence. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. She has no excess of emotions for this cadaver. Has she seen dead bodies before? It's likely. Uh, sorry. I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Port cities? On the oceans? This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the DeLorean century. As early as 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now? That is precisely what the sailors feared when they drew these maps. A fear of drowning within one's own corpse.
Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Preto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Preto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semenese Islands, then this. Revachol. Those are the two constants. Redefort on the shoulder, and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the inter age. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man was no sailor, and these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. Somewhere in an office lit by a single green desk lamp, Captain Ptolemius Price, 58, bald and bespeckled, is writing in the ledger on his desk. Rows and rows of days and weeks, laconic remarks in a single column, patrol, case, vacation, Injured. In Martinez, looking into Grenoble, he writes in one. Then the man puts down his pen and rubs his temples with both hands. Outside, there is a siren. Distant gunshots on the streets of the Jamrock Quarter. That makes sense to me. We have no more use for a map of the waterways, just like we don't need sailors the way we used to. This is what the custom would morph into on the Occident. Mercenary tattoos. His platoon members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. It could go this or the other way. Maybe if you're tactful, it could be beneficial. Do what you have to do, detective. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. But if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. We will be careful, ma'am. Is there anything else I can help you with? <laughs> 